but what if you don't train them and they stay? <laughs> <laughs> like the only choice we have as business owners is to train and develop your people. Welcome to Masters of Home Service, a podcast by Jobber. Each week we talk to successful home service entrepreneurs and experts in their field to learn how they built their company so that we can make your business more profitable and more efficient. We're in Las Vegas at Blue Wire Studios. And today we have three wonderful guests to talk about how to turn employees into leaders. So first off, we have Chase Stetson, the lawn dude on Instagram. Welcome to the show. How's it going, everybody? Glad to be here. Glad you're here. And Jason Savageau. Uh, Jason, you actually were a recipient for the Jobber Grant in 2023 for Career Builder, right? Yes, that's correct. We really appreciate what Jobber has done to support our training uh, endeavors. And so looking forward to having this conversation. Awesome. And you own Current Electric Systems. That's correct. Awesome. And then Raquel Lindsay, you also Hello. are a Jobber. Welcome. <laughs> You also are a uh, jobber grant recipient for Career Builder. Yeah. And you own a home residential cleaning business. Is that right? That's correct. Called Sparkle and Shine. Yes. Well, this is going to be a great episode. So, first of all, let's talk about turning employees into leaders. We all need more leaders, right? There's a leadership vacuum. Well, my uh, mentors said people are dying to be led, mm-hmm. right? And so we need to be leaders of leaders. So, how, what, how would you guys even define what a leader is in your business? So, for me in lawn care, I like somebody who is willing to be accountable, who's going to show up every day. I want them to get the job done the right way and to uh, hold themselves accountable as well as their helpers that they have. I would also add that uh, initiative is what I'm looking for. So identifying problems is a part of finding solutions to things, right? And so when you have an employee that can identify that problem but then go on to, okay, here are some ways we could solve it, Mm from my perspective, right? And Mm -hmm. if you give them the space to be able to uh, bring those things to the table, and sometimes, you know, that those, those, uh, those solutions may not be the the perfect answer, but you give them the space to allow them to solve problems. And the ones that find those and bring those solutions forward are, are really what, for me, identify someone with that leadership potential. Right. And especially for what we do, it's just constant problems. You walk in and you have to, uh, this doesn't work, or this was done, you know, weird prior, or uh, how am I going to solve this? And so nurturing that judgment and showing the ability to do those yep. things mm-hmm. is not something that in our profession is easy to kind of uh, checklist. Yep. Right? They're not fires is what I like to call it. For sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think I would agree with both Jason and Chase. Um, I would also add for us, I look for whether or not they embrace our company values, our core values. Integrity is um, something that's really important in our industry. A lot of our cleaners are in the people's homes alone. Mm -hmm, And so I'm looking for people who really have high integrity, um, accountability, taking initiative as well. Um, There's nothing like having to hold somebody by the hand. Mm -hmm. So I think that's significant for a good leader. Yeah. I feel like we all have had some pretty rough stories of doing this the wrong way. Mm -hmm. And so, and our listeners do too. I mean, everybody who owns a business has had an employee who they just couldn't get there with, whether it's their fault or the the person's fault. So any of you have any stories about a way that you did it the wrong way? And obviously we'll circle back around to, to, for how to do it the right way. But anybody have a, a way that you learned the hard way? So for me, a little background is I took over an existing business. My dad started my business went to school, took it over as out of college. He had some of the same crew leaders is what we call it, somebody that drives the truck and is accountable for their jobs. He had some of those guys for 20 years. So, you know, you come to a point when they're getting a little older, the the labor is almost too much on them, so they move on to something else. So what I did was, at first, the easy route was to hire friends. Mm. That's not always the best case because... It's hard to differentiate the friend versus workspace. Mm-hmm. So when it comes down to, let's say they're not showing up on time or they're not doing the job right, and I approach them you know, confrontationally, they view me as on a friend level when you really need to be looking at it from a business level. Yeah, I have a good story on this one. When the business was still young and I was looking at hiring those first employees, right? I did hire an individual who had experience and had the licensure and the qualifications to be able to work alone. But at the time, you know, you're, 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 you have this expectation that, and this 
kind of quality of work that you're doing on your own and then you're transitioning from that one person show to now you're becoming an organization, right? And the big mistake I made was to just kind of be overbearing with the micromanagement mm -hmm. of how a job needed to be done and not give them the space to fail. Mm -hmm. And that space to fail is crucial for their own growth and in their job and also to kind of meter with you, like how do you behave when they fail? Mm -hmm. And then how do you dress those failures with the individual and with the customer? And since I was so focused on doing the job right, mm -hmm. I didn't have any space for that. And that was, as it is with new employees and new employers, those lessons are far too often learned by the employee quitting. Mm -hmm. And then you're having to deal with that. Yeah. Rehiring process. Right? To, to, to try to find and fill that gap, and then you're doing damage control. So really finding the wherewithal to allow that space for failure has been an important lesson. Mm -hmm. One um, quick thing I want to throw in on top of that is, I heard this way back, is when you're a solo person and you're the only one in the business, you know, you're going to do it the best possible way you can. But when you start having employees, it's not their baby, it's not their business. So they're not going to be as motivated as somebody who owns it. So if they can do 75 to 80% of what you can do, I think that that's a win. You know, it's interesting because I've had, I, I experienced that, but I also experienced paradoxically kind of the flip side of that. Because I'm doing too many things, I cannot do anything at the, at the level that I really want to because there's not enough of me to go it's around. Spread too thin. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so the opportunity here is, is to bring employees in have them a little more focused in their area of their responsibility means that there's the potential that they can kind of exceed your expectations if you allow them the space to grow. Mm -hmm. And because they'll have more time to sit with that set of responsibilities and accountability. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's hard at first because you're, you're looking at your financials and especially if you're a pay-as-you-go kind of situation – if they make this mistake, is it going to rule, you know, take the company down? What's going to happen? And all those anxieties, you have to kind of let mm -hmm. a little bit more faith kind of proceed mm -hmm. in order for the, the leadership to flourish and that individual to really flourish in that mm -hmm. position. And then they can exceed, do it better than you are. And then you're off to the races. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think in some cases I might've micromanaged a little bit mm -hmm. because like you said, um, Chase, it is your baby. Just like you would with your own kids, you're very particular about who you allow to watch over them. Mm -hmm, sure. And so a more hands-off approach, letting them fail um, and learning from those failures. I've, I've learned to, to look at failure as an opportunity to, for them to learn and grow. Right. So You don't want them to make the same mistakes you did, though. Because mm -hmm. the whole point of a company is to build on what you've done. If you've paved the way and made all the mistakes... You don't want everybody behind you to pave the way too. So, so I, I'm a fan of letting people work in their own space and make mistakes, but like they should be also doing the way you want them to do it the first right, time. Right. So let's not give them too much freedom to just mm -hmm. start from scratch. That's, that's, that's the defeats the whole purpose of a of company. So Raquel, I'm curious. So you have, you have crew leaders and you have teams. And so you, you're always probably needing more crew leaders, I'm guessing. We all do. Mm -hmm. So what are you looking for in an employee in terms of, oh, that person has some leadership ability. Maybe that person can do it. What are those characteristics that you're looking for? And then we'll talk about how we develop them. Yeah. So one is um, loyalty to the company. <laughs> they need to show up mm. for the job. Um, consistency, integrity. Again, do they embrace and do they show forth our company core values? We actually train them. Um, we have a leadership track that we have as well. Mm. Yeah. Tell me more about, about that. Let's hear more about that. Yeah. You know, when somebody wants to become a leader, like, example, I have a lady who's been with me for five years. She started off awesome. as a cleaning tech, and she became a trainer, and now she's our training manager, and we're actually going to have her become our employee retention specialist, and so mm. we're putting together a plan for that position, but we took her, and we did some coaching and some training and some grooming to help her, because at first, she didn't think she had the capacity to do these things. But as we gave her some training and show her that she did have those qualities, she became That's a good sign, confident. some humility. She yes. had some humility. She yes. almost didn't want it almost. And so, but exactly. you, those, those are great. Yeah. What do you guys think? So I think with all of our, you know, we're all in different niches and 
the industry. But at the end of the day, it's all kind of a performance-based business, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So in order for somebody to perform well each and every week, so for me, like, they have to be meticulous on each lawn. Every single Monday, they're going to have the same route. They have to be able to do it the correct way. So if, as long as they stay motivated and stay trying to, you know, please the customer, that's a good sign. In our trade, there's a bit of a road between I'm interested in being an electrician to actually being in a place where you have the skills to be productive and contribute to the, the fiscal outcome. So there's a very long apprenticeship mm -hmm. and a very wide breadth of, of skills that are and knowledge that needs to be required before you can really say that you're uh, well on that road to your path of mastery. And a, a big part of that is having a mindset of mentorship. And when I was early in my career, and this is really the basis for why I started the company to begin with, is the folks that were above me in experience or ahead of me in experience were very reluctant to share the skills and the knowledge necessary to execute the work. That's and their bad. mindset was, if I teach you, you're going to steal my job. <laughs> <laughs> it's a limited mindset. Mm -hmm. And that really is pervasive in our industry. And on top of that, electricians are in this place where they have the mindset of an artist sometimes, mm -hmm. but we're more than just employees. And this is where I, I make that definition of a craftsperson mm -hmm. is someone who gets the job right beautifully and quickly. Right. Mm -hmm. Whereas the artisan is going to spend however much time yeah. it takes till it's perfect. I love that. Maybe not as efficient, but right. at the end of the day, get the job done. And the assembler is just going to follow your instruction, and then regardless of the outcome, the it's, quality might be down. It's just based on what you've written down. Mm -hmm. It's not my fault. So there's no accountability yeah. there. Mm -hmm. So that kind of dedication to craft, and you know, on top of that, I spent ten years in Japan, and I was able to work with craftspeople who were like seven, eight generations in. Mm -hmm. Mm. And I had uh, subcontractors that were carpenters, and they were descendants of temple builders. These these wow. cats are building <laughs> multi-story structures out of wood without a single nail or screw. Wow. wow. Okay. No no brackets. All wood hand joinery, mm -hmm. and the the skills and techniques they develop over that over that time span is is something of a legacy that cannot be bought and it cannot be created overnight. And so they're short-term plans are like 20 years out. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm looking at that as like, okay, we're just getting started here. First things first is, you know, in order to craft a leader, you have the culture, you have, are you really dedicated to this? Like, this is going to be a journey. Mm -hmm. It's not, oh, I went to two years and I'll just come out and make six figures. Yay. It, it's, it's, a, it's a bit more of a commitment than that. Mm -hmm. And so what we're really trying to do here is establish that, okay, this is going to be a commitment. you got to put in the years. And if you do, you meet us there, we're going to meet you there too and make sure that you are just nurtured into the most well-rounded craftsman we can do. And once you're on that path of mastery and you clear that threshold, you, you realize you, you have everything it takes to solve anything, but also you start to realize, wow, there's so much more to learn. Yeah. <laughs> and only through teamwork and having different generations together, can you really nurture and foster that environment? And so, you know, we're really playing a long game in that regard. And leadership is a part of it, but there's a lot of following that goes initially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the, the little bits of initiative uh, uh, play out regardless of what your position is. If you're brand new or you're seasoned or you're in charge of a crew or you're on your own, it's just, it's just core to everything. Yeah, I think I like Patrick Lencioni's model, which is hungry, humble, smart. Is this employee who you remember? We need leaders. We're looking for our employees who who have that. Are they hungry? Do they have a hunger and a desire to like work hard, make a high income, provide for the family, whatever their, their motivation is? Do they have an internal motivation, or are they just here for a job? Are they people smart? Are they able to interact? Are they able to calm situations down? Mm -hmm. Are they able to turn a negative situation to a positive? I think that those are three things that are really critical. On top of, and this is this sounds obvious, but it's not, uh, they have to do all the basics really well too. I've made the mistake of promoting someone who they did some things really well, but they also weren't doing the basics or some basics. You could never promote someone who isn't 
doing the basics because then they won't require their people to do the basics. If you're not leading by example, you mm -hmm. cannot hold accountability because you'll be a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that starts with us. That humility part can be hard too because mm -hmm. there's a lot of pressure to just be positive all the time. But sometimes you make a mistake and then I have no qualms with being in front of my team and going, you know what? This is something that I messed up on mm -hmm. and, and I need to work on this. And this is a personal flaw of mine and this is how I see it. And here's how I'm going to improve. Mm -hmm. And I, I think... A lot of us small business owners get caught up in having to have this facade perfect all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that showing that imperfection and being genuine about it is really, is really key in making that connection to the others because they're flawed also. Mm -hmm. And if they know that, okay, I'm going to try my hardest, I got to bring my game. But when, when I tried hard and a mistake was made, great, we, we're going to learn something. Mm -hmm. If I'm not trying and I'm sloughing off and mistakes are made, well, that's why. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's take a quick minute to talk about Jobber and how it's made our business better. Guys, what would you say is the most valuable function or part of Jobber? For me, being in lawn care, a lot of times for new customers, they'll see me out working. The neighbor will come up asking me for a quote. I love the fact that I can use the app, put in all their information, send them a quote right there on site. Because otherwise, it, 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 you ride down on you the napkin and, and sometimes you get maybe nasty in the truck. That or maybe uh, another lawn care company comes by and they just get to it quicker at that point. Right. By the time I'm able to get back to them at the end of the day. Great point. A feature we love about Jobber is the ability to put options into the quote. And then the customer can go in and check and uncheck and kind of customize the proposal based on, you know, after they've thought about it for a moment. And... That allows us to kind of give them various, kind of choose your own adventure, if you mm -hmm. will, as opposed to, hey, this is it. This is all we're going to do, and here's a lump sum price. Mm -hmm. uh, we found that feature has really increased the the win rates. Yeah. And also, they just like to be able to customize how they're going to this project go forward. Yeah, so we, we rate love that feature in Jobber. The approval rate goes up and you turn a $500 quote into a $2,000 quote. For sure. It's, it's awesome. So we love the automation, the automated follow-up emails and texts. Um, we also love the client hub. Mm. That has been really good for our clients as well. You should try Jobber too. You need Jobber. You need to stop running your business on anything else or on pen and paper. If you want to start with Jobber, Go to jobber.com slash podcast deal. You can get an exclusive discount for new users and start today. Don't wait. Do it today. What are some specific examples that you guys are doing to intentionally invest and develop your people? I think for me is I'm the guy or was the guy that was the guy who trains everybody in terms of how to mow, how to trim, how to take care of somebody's lawn. So I like to lead by example. I always take the new people with me and they're going to ride with me for a week or two to see how I expect them to work. And I'm going to show them that through the way I work. So leading by example, I think is extremely important. You know, you have your boss sometimes and you have a leader and the difference between a boss is the boss is not leading the way a lot of times. And the leader is the one who's, you know, in front of everybody showing them the way it's done. Some of the ways we are doing some things is we have a personal growth track and a professional growth track. Mm. We, um, have a dreams and goals sheet that we use to have our people say these are some of the things they want to do personally. And so those things that they want to grow in personally, we bring in people to come and do some trainings and things like that. We even ask them professionally, what do you want to do? Um, not everybody wants to be promoted into a leadership position. And so if they indicate that, then we start them on that track to, to help them to gain the skills that they need to do yep. that. You know, you bring in somebody, an employee, sometimes, you know, it's good to figure out what they are wanting to get out of the job initially. Mm -hmm. Some people, you know, they, they plan to be there long term. A lot of times, and you know, you might know this in lawn care, is it can be a stepping stone job sometimes. Maybe they need this job for mm -hmm. six months to nine months, and then they're ready to move on to something else. I think figuring that out early is important. Yeah, not trying to change someone who doesn't want to be a leader into a leader. That's not a good right. idea. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Something we do is we schedule intentionally every week time where we have the whole team in and we are picking a subject, whether it's a 
particular article in the code book and we're going to drill down or we're picking from the jobs we have scheduled that week. And if it's something that some of the team hasn't seen recently or has questions about, we're in there just dissecting all of the different parts of that. And that that technical training piece is important for craftspeople to nurture because they need more than just the business of it, which is also important. Mm -hmm. I mean, all both things are important, but the technical side is where they really start to get invested because they are learning a new technology, learning a new technique, learning a new approach, how to, how to interpret the code when, when this, that, or the other happens. And I mean, that book is thick and every three years they <laughs> kind of shuffle it on us. <laughs> and so just that cadence, like it's gotta be, it's gotta be a ritual. It's gotta be regular. And through that, you start to really kind of plant seeds that start sprouting up in others and things click and then they go out in the field and it's synapses for them. And we found that to be a very successful approach. So it's every Tuesday morning. That is what we're doing is bringing everyone in and, and doing that like intentional that. training. Yeah. yeah. One thing I've learned this year is that it can be done once a year and that's really ineffective or you can do it almost every day. And it's, it's very small things. Hey, great job there. Do that more often, whatever it is. Or, hey, that wasn't really great. Do it this way next time. Mm -hmm. And it takes like seven seconds. <laughs> And I think that if, if you're steering a car, when you drive down the road, you don't just, if you're driving down a straight road, you don't just lock the steering wheel in straight. You'd go into a ditch if you did that. Mm -hmm. you're, you're constantly making slight, small adjustments. And so what you don't want to do is let someone just go for six months without ever giving them any correction and then yeah. say, you know what, for the last six months, you've been doing it wrong. Yeah. What you do, the very first time they do it wrong, you correct it. And say, by the way, if you want to be a leader here, leaders do it this way, not that way. So do it this way. And man, do employees love that. Mm -hmm. They're not used to that. They're not used to getting constant feedback from their boss. They're used to getting yelled at when they screw up. Mm -hmm. And so we, as leaders, we have to be better. Mm -hmm. And it starts with the small adjustments before it gets just too big and too big of a gap. Mm -hmm. Anyone else doing like a one-on-one -on -one stuff to develop their people? Oh, we, we do regularly. As soon as they're hired, we, it's on the calendar. When they're one month, when they're three month, when they're six month, when they're mm -hmm. annual. And all of our electricians that are you know licensed or above the others they are constantly feeding back between each other between up and down and you know it's always a work in progress there's always ways to improve but we're really working on having a culture of kind of cross accountability and hey that was a great job there here's a better way to do it hey you need to be stepping up here and all of that is open and a kind of a safe space to because those criticisms can be hard to <laughs> take, right? And especially when you're in this mantra of constant improvement, we do need to recognize that there is a stamina involved with this, right? Mm -hmm. Especially when you have an employee that's trying really hard but is kind of struggling with it and it's and they're overwhelmed. And every step of the way is like, you're doing this wrong, you're doing that wrong. There's right. almost a fine line of well, it's, micromanaging. It's hard. If, if sure. it was easy, everybody sure. would do it. It's hard. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard. It's, hard. Yeah. it's a long time. It's hard. It, especially yeah. in our case, we, we're just total. we have such a variety of work that it's, it's, you're, you're not, they're not seeing a consistent pattern right away. And so it takes a while before they can start to put the pieces mm -hmm. together. And initially it's quite overwhelming, but we try to encourage them when they're doing things right and, and build off mm -hmm. of those positive reinforcements. But yeah, for sure, when it is time to, hey, <laughs> it, can, it, it can land hard on some people mm -hmm. and, yeah. and trying to deal with those emotions. And if, are they dealing with something in their personal life that is making it difficult? Mm -hmm. And how do you allow that for them to be vulnerable? Is, is a real challenge for, I think, any leadership position. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We do what we call touch points, and it's very similar to what you were just saying, Jason. We start them right off when they come in the door. You know, after they're finished with their training, then we do the one month, the 90 days, and we kind of want to sit down with them and do the reviews. But I meet with them on a monthly basis because I don't care how big we get, I, I really want to be hands-on with my yeah. people mm -hmm. because I do want to know what's going on in their personal lives. Um, we try to create a culture of celebration and encouragement. So we have what we call a shine wall, and we have like badges and things like mm -hmm. that. Really try to operate from a do unto others as you would have them do unto you, treat people with kindness and 
you know, encouragement. So when you do have to say the hard things, they already know that they're respected and valued. Giving them that feedback can be a little difficult. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know, that's a good point. A lot of times, you know, you'll have somebody and then, you know, one week maybe their performance is not up to what they normally are. Mm-hmm. And there could be something going on in their personal life that maybe it's good to get to know about mm-hmm. and figure out and then kind of go from there, yeah. really. I think one of my favorite things that I've adopted over the last couple of years are one-on-ones. And I actually got this from a podcast called Manager Tools. And basically, it's, it's a 30-minute meeting every week with your direct reports. And it's all about building a relationship. First 10 minutes is all about what they want to talk about. Second 10 minutes is what I want to talk about. And, and then the last 10 minutes is what uh, is talking about the future or maybe you end early. You do it every week. And I have seen so much fruit from that. Hmm. What is the measurable impact of doing this well? What, what's going to happen if we develop our employees into leaders? What's going to happen? What, what will our listeners experience if their business does as well? You're going to have partners in growing your business. Mm-hmm. And really, that's how much better is it going to be if you have those that are incubated within your organization rise to that level of like, I'm part of this. I am going to lead and do the best I can. I'm going to look for things I can solve. And then they're going to bring new perspectives and new ideas and new solutions that are off of your radar because the more people you get, the more your perspective is going to change. Mm -hmm. And you need that feedback from all the different levels and avenues coming in. And if if you all have the same intention of let's all do better, the numbers will come. Mm -hmm. And and that that is a lot more enjoyable than you know being that dictator at the top just telling everybody mm-hmm. know what to do and mm-hmm. keep to the checklist you know right i enjoy hearing and getting that kind of feedback from our team and later on you put a stick in the mud and look where you've come and you can see the growth mm-hmm. and there's just a lot of sense of uh, accomplishment waiting for you in that regard yeah i think it also helps with employee retention mm-hmm. as well as client Absolutely. satisfaction i know especially Absolutely. in the cleaning industry um having a consistent you know, person in people's houses is so important. And so being able to have employees to stay on with us, mm-hmm. um, I think that their buy-in, they're more invested. I look at the people who have been with me the longest, and, I mean, you know, talking about partnership, they look at it as that. You know, when it mm-hmm. comes to our brand, they don't want any negative impact to come, you know, to our brand at all because they want us to succeed and they want the brand to really be looked at with esteem. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, the outcome is a, a growing company mm-hmm. because you can't grow without leaders. You, can, you right. can't run You can't run a 20-person uh, cleaning company with no leaders. Mm. You pull your hair out, right? Yep. And so <laughs> if you want to grow your company, you need leaders. Exactly. Yeah. If, if you don't want to grow, then you don't need leaders. Right. But if you want growth and, and build a, a bigger, sustainable business, you have no choice. You have to develop your people. Yeah. There's someone out there listening who's like, oh, but I did that once. And I, developed, I poured my heart and soul into this guy, and then he left me for the competitor down the street. I'm never doing that again. Yeah. Okay? Let's speak on that. Yeah, I, I think that's part of this is you have different growth trajectories and pace of growth, and your company is growing and evolving at certain paces, and other people are growing and evolving at certain paces. And sometimes those track, and mm-hmm. other times they diverge. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it can happen the other way, too. The company can evolve faster than the employee can keep up, right? And so my mindset is, and, and in our industry, in, owners are generally defensive of this. Like, they go, oh, I'm going to put all this in, exactly as you said. Like, I'm put all this effort, invest all this time, money into this person, they're going to leave. And I, I really feel like that's a bit short-sighted. I think, for me, the ideal situation would be if an employee – felt they were growing faster than the company and they did leave and maybe did start their own business or went to another company Mm -hmm. and then they came back. (laughs) Right. Yeah. That would be golden because they, then they're comparing, they got a comparison set out there and then they come back and go, (laughs) the grass isn't as greener. Right. 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 Wait a second. (laughs) This company really is awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm here. I'm now I'm in it to win it. Like you would have someone locked in at that point. I had had the exact example happen where I had a guy work with us for a couple of years. I trained him up, you know, taught him how to do the things I do. It's almost like he got complacent. Maybe he felt like he wasn't growing as fast as he wanted to left, went to a different company and realize, like you just said, the grass is no not green on the mm-hmm. other side, no pun intended, being lawn mm-hmm. care. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
but you know, he realized that other company works you way harder, doesn't care nearly as much. Mm. And then, you know, ultimately ended up coming back. I mean, sometimes you just have to experience something to learn. Uh, you can be told, you can be cajoled. And when we're the owners of the company, it's hard for an employee not to kind of hear that with some kind of tone of an ulterior motive. Mm. Well, of course you're saying that. You're the owner. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> and, you know, in your heart of hearts, you're just like, I'm, I just really want this. In, I mean, for me, I want this company to be the employer I wish I had when I was early in my career. And I'm putting my heart and soul and putting all that risk in. We're showing, you know, glimmers of success and progress. But for some people, they're going to have to experience that Mm -hmm. other scenario. And maybe that works better for them. But I think at the end of the day, their time spent with us should have been progress on on their side, right? Mm -hmm. Either they learned something profound or they're going to get that comparison Mm -hmm. set and come back. Or who knows? I mean, you know, 20 years down the road, you might be... They might be coming back looking to purchase the company. You have no idea on this. And being possessive of that, of those possibilities, I think is kind of very short-term mindset. Mm-hmm. If one of our employees went out and, and did their own thing and was successful, I, I would be there. I agree. I, I would absolutely applaud Cheater. them and be yeah. their supporter and not their not their competitor. Mm-hmm. What if you do train them and they do stay? Here's the thing. Welcome to, welcome to owner, you know, owning a business, right? Sure. Like there's risk involved. Right. But what if you don't train them and they stay? <laughs> <laughs> like the only choice we have as business owners yeah. is to train and develop your people. Mm-hmm. It's ethical and, and it's the only way that you you build a company. And if you if you say, well, what? Well, then maybe you shouldn't own a business if you're not willing to do that. I mean, there is risk involved. So mm-hmm. let's do some final thoughts here. I'm going to summarize uh, this conversation, which was really great, into three actionable steps. Number one, instill your values in your team. Look for hungry, humble, and smart. Number two is talk about your people's goals with them in weekly one-on-ones. Then number three, it, this whole idea of if I, if I develop them and then they leave, then uh, that's a limiting belief. And that's part of business and you have to be willing to take that risk. It will happen. Yes. It will happen. And that's part of running a successful business. Jason, Chase, Raquel, thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. How do people find out more about you and your companies? Our website is sparkleandshinecleaningservices.net. Our website is currentelectricsystems.com. You can find me on all platforms. That one, dude. Awesome. Guys, thanks for being here. It was a really great conversation. More importantly, what you do matters. You're building businesses, you're developing your people, you're serving hundreds and thousands of clients, and it starts with each of you, so thank you. And thanks to you for listening. I hope that you heard something that will help you develop your people and develop leaders so you can be more profitable and more efficient. I'm Adam Sylvester. You can find me at adamsylvester.com. Remember, your people need to be developed. They deserve your very best, so go give it to them. We'll see you next time.